Hello, well I'm continuing with the soul unit today and I've been a bit sort of nuts in a way but it's worth the risk I think. I have slightly shortened my uh, footbed here. I felt with the last it was just too long so I've taken it down only probably about three eighths of an inch something like that. Uh, what's that nine millimeters approximately <laughs> if you're a metric person. Anyway I've taken it down a bit and what I've just been doing is just with a pencil just going around the edge marking where that rebate is going to go so there'll be like a little cut shoulder that the leather will sit in all the way around. Uh, so what I'm going to do next I'm going to use my hollower knife and I'm going to sort of take out a nice little hollowing around the footbed area um, just so that your foot sits nicely. If you look at a shoe last ta -da, you can see it's not flat underneath it's actually got a bit of curvature and that's really to make it comfortable for your foot. It's the same sort of thing. I always sort of naively thought shoe lasts would be the same as your foot, but they're not. Um, they're, they're actually made in a way which is comfortable for your foot, but it's not the same shape as your foot. And it's quite an important distinction, all of that. I mean, without getting hugely technical and not that I really understand it regardless terribly well but basically a shoe last tends to grip your foot around the waist in very sort of broad terms and so that's the bit you want to try and get right. A boot last tends to grip your foot more up the top ankle area so they're all sort of different and the toe area you can actually within reason as long as there's enough room for your toes to move forward you can do what you like with that. But um, so anyway, yeah, I want to make sure that I shall make this as comfortable as I can on the footbed. So knife out next. Good bit of fun, these knives. So just to show you, going, got a little holder here, the knives bolt on and off two different metal shafts. So that's the hollowing knife that I'm going to be using first. And you can see it's just like a chisel, nice and sharp. And it's got a bolt just there so it bolts on. I'll get that on we'll get going. So this is the knife handle it has a little booty tell it's owned by a leather worker can't you and um, it's got a couple of little like adjustment holes here so you can put that blade into either of these two holes. So I'll show you what I mean. I can undo it, put the nut off. It fits more happily into one hole than the other as it happens but I will try it in that hole first where I'll get good leverage and if need be move it up to that hole. So these are the handles I've put on because these didn't have any handles. Nice big thick ferrule which is a bit of um, pipe, cold drawn steel pipe I used for this. Uh, so it's got a three millimeter wall on it, nice and sturdy and it's an old bit of ochre had lying around which I turned up for the handle itself. So that just bolts on and I'm then ready for the off. Same as before, the hook hooks into a little eyelet, well not so little eyelet, <laughs> on my workbench, on my, which I'm using my spoon mule bench for this. But it's lovely, you look at these old tools and you can see all the laminations where they've worked this metal into layers. So it's just there, it probably just about show on camera, where you can see the layers of metal have been hammered together. It's lovely. Roughly 1896 or before these, they're dated by an owner in 1896. Doesn't mean to say, of course, that they were the first owner and hopefully they'll go on to someone else after I've done with them. Anyway, there you are, that's the tool. First tool we're using. So the hook of the knife just goes through the eyelid hey presto. Now in an ideal world you'd have obviously a far uh, st sort of sturdier bench than the one I'm using but um, as this is a relatively temporary arrangement for me this is absolutely fine and then I can just work down here and start hollowing this off. Got to get used to using this tool getting my angle so worked out. I need to also be careful I don't 
over cut one way and have it all shear off the end. So I think actually I'll try and work on the other end a bit as well. And this is where I'll probably need to shift where I have this tool. It may actually be easier to use it across the grain. <laughs> it's all experimentation. Obviously if you've done a few of these you would get a way that you like doing it. Oh yes that's quite nice. I quite like that actually. That is more controlled because I don't want the grain running out the end of the heel. Yeah, I like that. The other thing I noticed one or two of the bodgers doing recently is putting a little bit of like um, either wire or a little fitting down this end to stop the hook jumping around too much, which is quite interesting. I might stuff a bit of rope in there actually. Anyway, I'll do a little bit of this, just start to get a feel for what it's like. The leverage, I mean I'm not putting any effort at all on this and it's, it's fantastic because it's obviously such a large um, sort of leverage action with the arm here that you really can make this go very nicely. I don't want to go across my rebate line so I am being careful that little line I mentioned where I'll be fixing the leather I don't want to go over that at the moment so I'll proceed with caution I will look at my base of my shoe last now and again just to check how the sort of gradient goes you see at the moment when I look at my shoe last there's no nasty lip on here I've got a nasty sort of drop down lip and one can obviously put the last on there and you can start to sort of visually inspect and check what's going on but there's definitely a high point here I need to get rid of so I think it's really just a matter of going along with this carefully taking it down I'm going to take a little bit of a risk I pronate outwards slightly on one foot so I am going to sort of put a bit of drop when I come to hollow down here on the footbed on that side just to try and counter my pronation very slightly. I won't do it much but I think it's worth me just seeing as a bit of an experiment. If it's a disaster I can fill it with some cork but I think it could be quite a good move. So I'll carry on going down this side and I'll then go down the other side and sort of meet in the middle but I think that's giving me quite a nice little gradient there which will be about the right sort of thing I want so if I, I'll carry on doing that properly but just to show you by illustration what I will then be doing is going down that way and that gives me quite a nice across the grain cut I've got good control feels a little bit awkward like that. I'm just watching my hand obviously. But it doesn't a knife doesn't jump. Like that. Yeah, I think that will work quite well if I carry on like that. And also the real test <laughs> I have a foot. I'm careful of that blade, do not worry. So I'm just putting my foot on it as well to sort of feel is that giving me the support? and comfort that I feel I'd need. I'm also sort of just going around underneath the shoe and giving that a little bit of a sort of tidy up as well. It's quite a good opportunity to try and give it a bit more definition and shape. So I'm just taking out, trying to make it look a bit more elegant really and keeping the weight of the actual foot piece down. They get quite a nice, fairly controlled cut with the hollow knife. I'm able to take off, you know, small or quite large bits if I need to. So I'm just working on the second one now. Same sort of idea. Get them to a similar stage and then I'm sort of keeping myself sort of roughly in time. <laughs> My risk is if I go and make one um, and sort of fully finish it, but then I'll think, how did I do that bit, or where did I do that? So it's far better to try and make shoes as a pair, uh, not to make them sort of individually. So that's the same sort of principle here. I just want to do 
all this sort of stuff in sort of sequence and then I can go on to using my grip a bit on both of the sort of soles. It's also quite nice if I'm to do the sort of same operations on something on the same day because like that your you know your mind's in the same place you remember oh yeah I did that or I had to be careful not to do this. I'm finding this slightly easier second time round but it's definitely something to get used to and I can see there's a lot of learning on all of this. It's only by doing anything like this that you do begin to learn. Well, that's how I find I learn. I still read around things, look at YouTube videos and then try something and read a bit more, you know, whoops I'm going a bit wrong there, read a bit more and keep learning that way. Try and avoid this silk like grain run out as it happens that is going to have the edge put round so it doesn't matter too much but anyway that keeps it neat. Anyway I will carry on like this. So yeah that, that's sort of what they're looking like at the moment and <laughs> what I think I'm going to do next because I've been putting my foot into these as I've been doing them getting rid of high spots and trying to get them as comfortable as I can. I need to take this outer edge down with the grip a bit because at the moment it's obviously quite proud and so once that comes down so that's coming down in order to take the lever it gives you a little, like a rebate going around the edge. I'll do that next because then I know exactly the sort of surface I'm playing with uh, and I think it'll be a lot easier then to do like the final sort of fit. I am also doing my best to match it up to my last um, with some success but again I've got a bit of a high ridge so I want to get that flatter. I suspect whatever I do I won't get it totally matching the last because I think all of this is a little bit of a sort of like try and get it as best as you can job <laughs> but yeah so grip a bit next go around the edge. So I have a choice here of gripper bits I could be using. One's got like a double V on it and the other one's a straightforward, some more of a squared off shape where you could get the cut quite happily. I'm going to start with this one and see how I get on. It's one of those things when you have a sort of tool you're not used to using it's really a matter of see, get a feel which one you like. So these again they have a bolt this one has a chunky, whoops, pick that up. <laughs> so yeah, it has a bolt on it again and it's got a spacing <laughs> bolt acting a bit like a spacing washer. With the grip a bit, it actually has a sort of floating channel. So I can pop it in the tool and vary its position up and down. I'll put it, I think, roughly sort of towards the sort of back end of it and see what that's like. Again I'll just change its position if that's not feeling quite right. But we'll give that a go and see if I can cut a channel with it. I might practice on a little bit of off cut first. Again I've got one of these leather socks on here just for when it's stored away. It's not going to cause an injury for someone with that hook on the end. So same idea, hooks in the bench and then it gives you a nice bit of leverage. So I'm just going to experiment on a little bit of sort of off cut of wood here and just start to get a feel for how it goes. Again it's there we are, quite tricky getting the feel for these things. Oh yeah, that's, I can see how that works anyway. I don't know how easy it would be. Yeah. That is giving me a definite lip, which is, you know, that's the idea. So basically I'm cutting a lip round and then I'll be nailing the leather wall of the shoe to that lip. I think I'll practice a little bit more. I may try the other bit as well just to 
get a feel for that but this seems okay this one it's actually sort of broken off on top which is a bit of a shame I shall probably try and attach a new screw thread to it and it's quite nice I quite like that actually it gives you a very defined 90 degree angle to your wall it is you know, set that quite tricky also to cut with it um, yeah so here goes with the grip a bit I've still tried to mark my line as a bit of a guide I'm sure as you get used to this you can probably do it just like that I'm going cautiously so a bit of flake off there not so happy <laughs> quite interesting with this gripper knife you can obviously also take it from the side as well so I was going previously on top getting bits of grain run out but you can tackle it from the side and actually I think some of the time that is quite quite helpful it still takes quite a lot of sort of <laughs> working out how this goes I imagine after I've done a pair, I'd get a bit better at it. But I think the side cutting way gives slightly less chance for all this grain run out. And you have to sort of keep moving the shoe, it's the sole, it's quite tricky. Do a bit of a shortcut on a part of it so you can then get back and try another piece I tell you I take my hat off to the people who have mastered this I can now see why <laughs> I heard one of the experienced people saying it's virtually impossible to learn this yourself it is not easy and I need to be careful now I'm getting close to my drawing line here for the sole I don't want to go any further in so I can go down a bit more for my shelf, but no more in just there. Anyway, I will carry on just taking my time, trying to keep my blade at 90 degrees the whole time. Which, as you can probably imagine, is not that easy. Well, that, that grip a bit was really a challenge and a half. It's, it's funny though, because the first shoe took me literally forever and I kept sort of getting grain run out and having difficulty. The second sole unit, I, I, I went back in the evening and thought, oh, I'll just do a little bit, you know, just to try and keep it moving along kind of thing. And with a, within the hour, I'd sort of mastered it and done it. So that was number two, which actually I'm fairly happy with all in all. That's number one. So I have got it. Uh, I still think that grip a bit is a, a difficult tool to master. And I think I need quite a lot more practice to have a chance of getting anything half decent. But, you know, I, I can live with that. It's not perfect, but I can live with it. So what I'm going to do at the moment, these soles are very heavily water bound. There's a lot of water in there. I can feel the dampness. And so what I'm going to do now is let them dry out. I'll dry them out so sort of fairly naturally to start with. So they're just in this shed for a while to sort of dry off. I'll then bring them in the house where it's a bit warmer and dry them there. But I may keep them wrapped in a bag to stop them sort of drying too quickly and splitting. But they're not too big a section. So I'm sort of hoping I can get rid of a lot of that water and then be able to carry on working on them. <laughs> One should probably do this to this stage and then, you know, let them properly dry. But I'll be moving ahead as usual. They're, they're actually at the moment quite fluffy. So 
um, I need them to dry a bit more in order to get a cleaner finish, cleaner cut on them. But I think it is getting there. I have done a few checks with my last. And this is the um, bottom imprint of my last. And I've just sort of been checking that I've got the size and I've made it a tad more generous just there, but it's actually on on spec at the moment. So I'm hoping that I'll be all right. <laughs> anyway, I'm pleased to get it to this stage. I don't think the actual rest of the finishing on this will take long at all. And the next video, I think we'll be moving into doing the leather uppers. They certainly feel comfortable on my feet. I have actually tied these to my feet and tried walking in them. So I'm quite happy from that point of view. <laughs> anyway, thanks for watching and see you in the next video if you have subscribed <laughs> okay then bye bye thanks for watching